Today, we acknowledge our God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We acknowledge you, Lord, because you are the creator, the provider and the supreme owner of all things. We also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we work and live and recognise their continuing connection to land, water and community. We pay our respect to elders past, present and emerging and pray that we can work together to leave a legacy of reconciliation, justice and hope for all future Australians. Good morning from the Bendigo Salvation Army. It's great to have your company today. Soon we're about to hear a message from one of our officers from the Bible, a message about the good news of Jesus. But before we do that, let's prepare our hearts and our minds to hear from God with this song.
Good morning. The reading today comes from John chapter 4, selected verses between verses 5 and 30, entitled Jesus at the Sumerian Well. And I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. Jesus came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? And the comment for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to come back to here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You're right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you've had five husbands and the man you are now with is not your husband. What you've just said is quite true. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Just then the disciples returned and were surprised to find Jesus talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar... The woman went back into the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. I haven't done any study on it, but I would imagine that the stats for online shopping this year, they would be off the charts in comparison with other years. And so I don't know about you, but certainly when I go on to buy something online, I will certainly look at the description and the specifications and all that sort of thing. But the, the important thing for me is to take a look at what other people have said about the product, how other people have reviewed the product. Um, marketing people get it. See, they have a whole list of all these people who have actually bought the product and they ask them to give their review on it because they get the power of personal testimony. And sometimes I think we as Christians, I certainly speak for myself here, we forget the power of our personal testimony. We forget that we each have a story to tell about the, the way that God has worked and continues to work in our lives. But there are definitely, and probably more, but definitely three reasons why each of us should be sharing our story, should be telling our personal testimony. The first one is that Jesus encourages it. We read in Mark chapter 5 verse 19 that Jesus tells his disciples to go back to their home, uh, back to their family and tell them what the Lord has done for them. And he says, tell them how he had mercy on you. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he says, and you will be my messengers in all of Jerusalem, throughout Judea, the distant provinces, even to the remotest places on the earth. Jesus encourages his followers to go and tell the good news 
of what God has done in their lives. And that should be reason enough for us to do it. But second, the apostles, they did it. The apostles um, spread the word, the good news of what God had done in their lives constantly. Seven times in the book of Acts and in his epistles, Paul shares his personal testimony of how God transformed his life, flipped it upside down. Why? Because there is so much power in personal testimony. And third, all Christians can engage in telling their story. We may not all be called to preach or teach, but we can all share our own story. It belongs to us. And so we have the opportunity to share that with others. We don't have to be brilliant speakers or anything. We can share our story and people can't argue with it because it's ours. It's our personal experience. And this is what happened with the woman at the well in our scripture reading today. So let's take a look at the power of testimony uh, throughout today's scripture reading. There's something really important in this scripture that happens before the woman goes and shares her story with her community. And that is that she experiences Jesus for herself. She has an encounter with Jesus, which transforms her life. So we actually have to know Jesus, not know about him, but we actually have to know him to have a personal relationship with him, to experience what he has for us, for us to be able to go and and tell others about it. She had this revelation, this revelation that this, this man standing in front of her, this was the Messiah. It was a life-changing experience for her. She had a personal experience that no one else could deny. No one, no one is qualified to tell of Jesus until they experienced him for themselves. Now, have you ever received a gift or some exciting news that you just like you just couldn't contain? You just had to share it with other people. That's what sharing our testimony should be like and that's what it was like for this woman she she'd experienced this 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 news this transformation this relationship with this man who knew everything about her that she just met and it was like you can read you can sense the urgency in that as you read that she went off and she she told everyone in her community about this man who knew everything about her. She left her jar, her water jar at the well, left it all behind to go and tell others. There was that urgency and sharing that news with others. And sometimes we we miss that. We don't have it in ourselves. And, And sometimes I think we need to rekindle that relationship with Christ so that 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 the Holy Spirit stirs that urgency within us so that we can go and share our story with such eagerness that she did. And now obviously we are called to go into all the world and to make disciples, but I think there is something in this story that that tells us a little bit about the sphere of, of our testimony. And that is our testimony We need to start telling our testimony where we are. Yes, we need to go into all the world and we need to go into all the world and make disciples and share the gospel. But we start right where we are. This woman, she went back to the village, to the people she'd been avoiding, and she shared what had happened with them. These people knew her, they knew her past, and they could see the transformation in her life. We have to do the same. We share our testimony to start with, with those who know us, with those who knew what we were like before we encountered the living Christ. And if they can see the difference in each of us, if they can see that transformation, if they can see how the way we were living is different from how we live now, 
then that is such a powerful story. There is so much power in that when they can witness that for themselves. So we begin in our own town with our own people where people knew us before our conversion or before our, our experience of um, deepening our relationship with God and they see and they hear what the Lord has done in each of us. Our sphere for testifying is right here, right now, right where he's placed us. So the question is how? How do we do it? Well, in verses 28 and 29, there are seven things that are emphasised in how we should share the good news with others. And the first is priority. As I said, this woman, she left her jar. She left her jar at the well. Her priority, her main concern was going to get water. But now her concern was going and telling others and saving souls so that they could experience this transformation that she had experienced. Second is earnestness. When she went back to the village, it wasn't just a casual conversation. There was, there was this earnestness in how she went about going and uh, speaking to them with conviction about what had happened to her. The third thing that's emphasised is direction. And the scripture says she said to them, she said to the people. Now, if she's going to say to the people, she has to first find them. And one thing that we need to do, we need to wait for this same direction from the Holy Spirit so that we can be directed to the people that we need to speak to as well. And following on from that, there's emphasis on speech. We often hear, I can't speak. I can't share my story, but we each can, whether it's in a one-on-one -on -one setting, if it's a group setting, we each have the ability to speak and to share our own story. Next is humility. She did this, she went running back to the village to speak to people, not to put a spotlight on herself, but to put the spotlight on Jesus, the one who had changed her life. There was nothing in it uh, that was drawing attention to herself at all. The next is challenge. She says, come and see. She doesn't argue with them, but she invites them. She challenges them to come and see for themselves. Come and see this man who knew everything about me. Come and see for yourself. Come and experience for yourself. Are you willing to do that? And then finally, interrogation. She asks that question, could this be the Christ? And it's like she plants this little, this little seed, this little question into their minds. And it, and it made people think for themselves and question and face that question for themselves. Could this be the Christ? I don't know. I need to find out for myself, right? There is so much power in our personal testimony and we see the result from this story that all of these people that listen, these people who, again, she had avoided, she'd gone out of her way to avoid, she'd gone and shared her story with and they all came to meet this Jesus. Can you imagine the power that your testimony can have if you would just share it with others who don't know Jesus. Can you imagine how challenging your story could be for those who don't know Jesus to actually come and meet him for themselves? I was challenged earlier this year to write a 30-second testimony that is hard work. I've been alive for 43 years uh, and to condense it into 30 seconds, it's hard work. But I want to encourage you to have a think about that. What is important in your story? What is important enough that you want to share how this is where you were and this is what happened and now this is where you are because of that? How can you share that in a short and succinct way? 
how can we share our story right here and right now so that we can see lives transformed in the name of Jesus. We do it right here, right now, right where we are. God has placed us in the perfect place to do this. Thank you to Amanda from Lee and Gatha Selvos for sharing that challenging message with us today about sharing our stories and transforming the world around us. If you'd like someone to pray with you or you'd like to respond to that message, then feel free to get in touch with us. Um, also, you can get in touch with us for volunteering, pastoral care or emergency relief needs just by visiting our website at salvationarmy.org.au forward slash Bendigo. Well, thanks for joining with us this week and we look forward to sharing with you again next week.
Thank you.